How's it going, guys? It's Mike. I just want to say real quick, if you're enjoying the show, give us a little uh, give us a little money on Patreon. We're still doing a show every single day, six days a week over there. Uh, Deb has done some interviews with people. Um, they're a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah. So kick us a couple bucks if you can. $5 a month gets you... Six six shows every week, that's, um, I mean, that's got to be like 50 shows a month, right? If you do the math, I don't have time, but get over there and here's the show. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Uh, I think in today's episode, we're going to talk about the place that I've decided to make my home for the past 12 years. Uh, we're going to talk about South Brooklyn, where uh, Deborah lived for about... Uh, I think six or yeah, six years. She lived in Bay Ridge and, um, and, uh, well, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff because there's a, there's a documentary coming out. My guest today is, uh, Maria Guido. You can see her on, uh, uh, where can they find you, Maria? I guess Twitter, uh, right? Yeah. Right now you can find me on Twitter at Sandernisto 412. And uh, we've had her on the show before, but do you want to give yourself, you want to give a little background of, well, I mean, you're, you're Italian. So we're going to, we're going to talk a lot about, I guess this episode is sort of about like uh, Italian lynch mobs, you know? Yeah. And how and, crazy Italian Americans have gotten. Yeah. And the stain we've left on this country. Yeah. Yes. The stain we've left <laughs> on this country and how we're the, <laughs> the fucking grease stain we've left on this country. Yeah. Yeah, the marinara exactly. stain. The fucking olive oil grease stain that we've left <laughs> on this yeah. country. Yeah. That's like a speech the bad guy gives in a movie. He's like, Italians are nothing more than a grease stain on the shirt of America. <laughs> Which, you know, I mean, that's pretty, that's a pretty good diss. Yeah. Do you it's get like grease a- stains? I get grease stains on my clothing all the time. I forget. Yeah, I forget that not- I have olive oil on my clothes, and then I go to wash them, and then they come back from the wash, and I go, motherfucker! Yeah, it sucks. And actually, when I was in Italy, somebody had told me, but it never, I like never, it never occurred to me to ask for it when I was over there, but somebody had told me before I went, they were like, that they have some type of like powder at like restaurants in Italy, in certain places where like, they'll give it to you if you spill oil on yourself. Really? Yeah, but I like never. And they're just holding out on us. What's that? They're just like holding out on us. Yeah, like why don't you give it to us, dude? Because like that shit's oily, and I'm sorry, like I'm not gonna. I'd rather eat than whatever I get stained on my clothes, but it does yeah. suck. Yeah. Well, we're gonna talk about the incident. Do you, another thing that I do. This this doesn't have anything to do with being Italian. But sometimes in my apartment, I'll just get whiffs of uh, bad of bad smells. Does that happen? I like yeah. I, I'll just smell uh, something. Lately, it's been. Although I thought I plugged up all the holes, we've had a mice problem. We live on the first floor, oh. so I'll just get whiffs of of that. Of mice. Um, but so what I want to talk about, we're going to, we're going to. So HBO has a documentary coming out. It's called uh, Storm Over Brooklyn. I figured I would. I would help them out and promote their, you know, promote their documentary a little bit. I didn't know anything about this story. I never heard about it. I remember as a, as a, you know, as a younger person hearing about Amadou Diallo. Um, I, as a kid, I read some GQ article about that guy, Abner Louima. Um, but I didn't hear anything about this. This happened a couple of years before I was born, but apparently um, in 1989, there was a kid, a 16 year old kid, named Yusuf Hawkins, uh, who was murdered in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, um, by basically a, uh, a lynch mob. He, w- he went to Bensonhurst to uh, look at a used car, and he was stopped by a group of teens, um, and they shot him. Um, the teens were out. The teens were Italian-American. They were out because... They were mad that one of the, uh, I guess a girl from their school was dating a black kid. So they, they killed him. A couple of days after that, um, they, there was a march through Bensonhurst. And uh, it was, um, there were like, 
it was very uh what's the word aggressive they had they had uh people coming out of their homes yelling racial slurs um i guess the world got to see what it was like in bensonhurst um but yeah i guess there's a lot there's a lot to talk about have you ever been to that part of brooklyn yeah i've been there once um i mean i'm from pittsburgh so i obviously you know i pit i grew up in pittsburgh so i'm very familiar with pittsburgh italians but i have mm. been in that area of, of brooklyn um and i do know you know some some thing about like this case i was young too i think but like five or six so it really didn't you know mean anything to I, I didn't know about it at the time and it's really um you know it's one of those horrible murders that hasn't been discussed and there were actually yeah. two other guys that died like in the 80s mm -hmm. by these lynch mobs um, yeah michael griffin right was a guy uh i I've re i read a little bit about this this guy in howard beach who was uh he was uh, confronted at a, at a diner or something, and then he ran away. And then right. he was killed on the Belt Park. He got hit by a car on the Belt Parkway. Yeah. And then the other guy was Willie Turks, and that was okay. in 1982. So, okay. like, this was kind of like, I guess you could compare it to, like, when George Floyd and everybody finally standing up, you know, mm -hmm. and getting out in the streets. Not that we didn't beforehand. I mean, you know, look at Freddie Gray's murder. I mean, everybody was out in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. What I'm talking about, I guess, more as as a whole, like as a nation or whatever. But mm -hmm. so they said, yeah, that that was like it, it just was building and building. And that was just kind of mm -hmm. it. Right. So like the tension was already there. Right. But hasn't there been tension there? I mean, I don't really know you know, about how white flight and every, you know, if nobody, if anybody that doesn't know what white flight it is, it's when black people started moving into neighborhoods and white families, quote unquote, the suburbs. And would just leave. Yeah. Um, so they call that white flight. Now, a lot of Italian Americans didn't. Mm -hmm. A lot of Italian, a lot of Italian immigrants did not leave the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Um, so from what I understand, especially in places like you know, Bensonhurst, that they, it was a very, there was a lot of racial tension there already, mm -hmm. um, which we've talked about on the show before. I don't know, <laughs> you know, because they're two similar, cult, you know, yeah. it's two very similar cultures, you know, based on this family piece, this whole, I mean, but anyways. Yeah. But you wouldn't think that, you wouldn't think that if you went there now, though, because if you went to Bensonhurst or um, Bay Ridge, um today it's mostly it's a lot of arabs it's a lot of um uh like pakistani people it's a lot of asians um uh it, it's it's very it's very diverse so it doesn't look like so i would imagine that it doesn't look like it did in the late 80s right because we they were what koch was still the mayor i mean mm -hmm. new york was still going through that process of like gentrification like you guys didn't fully lose the, the that cultural piece yet of what New York once was, mm -hmm. regardless of how grimy it was and dirty and seedy, whatever. It was yeah. New York. There was a yeah. culture there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, now it's not like, I don't even think that you, from what I remember, and but it's been like a couple years since I've been there. There's not really anything that stands out that still represents what I guess Bensonhurst would have been in the sixties. Yeah. Right, right. There's little, um, there's little pockets of Italian neighborhoods, but it all seems to be in in places where it's like very much, it's still very um, segregated. Like if you asked me if New York was segregated, I would probably I would probably say like, not really, and, and that it's not as segregated as other American cities. But then there's still little pockets that you go to. So a good example is, um, you know, the neighborhood Diker Heights. Yeah. So there's Bay Ridge. So if you go like if you're if you're going in South Brooklyn on the edge on sort of like the um the west the west coast of Brooklyn, you're going down the, the BQE. There's there's Bay Ridge and then to the east of Bay Ridge, it's Ben there's Diker Heights and then Bensonhurst. 
So Diker Heights is a neighborhood where there's no trains that go there. There's no, there's no subway stops or anything. Um, and uh, it's very Italian. There's a lot of, uh, there's like, it's like, an, you know, it's an Italian neighborhood. I liked going there when Deb lived down there because, um, you know, there were like a, a bunch of Italian neighborhoods or, or I'm, I'm sorry, Italian uh, shops and stuff in almost walking distance. Um, and then Bensonhurst is to the east of that. But the funny thing about Diker Heights is it's also the neighborhood where there's like these big giant houses where they put up um, the Christmas lights, the right? Christmas, the Christmas lights. There's these massive Christmas light displays, which, which I'm sure. So I'm sure there's a lot of wealth in that, in that area as well. Um, so I don't know if that kind of stuff is intention, but, but, but it does, it does very much look like, they, it, it, there, there was a conscious effort to be like, don't, no fucking subway over here. Right. Like this is our area. If you're going to gentrify or not gentrify, but if you're going to let people, you know, yeah, like this whole territorial piece, which, mm -hmm. you know, and this is no excuse for the Italians at all stems from intergenerational trauma, whatever the fuck happened over in Italy, you know, mm -hmm. it's this territorial piece and, mm -hmm that inherently you know becomes racist yeah especially in a country like america because we're yeah. built on racism yeah i know it almost makes me wonder like you're right that is a big part of i mean that seems like a big part of urban life to be territorial like that there was a guy that i worked with at uh this moving company he was a comic too danny cruz and he was from queens and he was like he said he like he lived in an Italian neighborhood and he was like, as soon as West Indians started moving in, like everybody left within a year. Um, so I don't know what that is, uh, that 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 sort of that um, that mentality, that neighborhood territorial mentality or where it comes from. I don't know if it has anything to do with poverty or whatever, but the idea that there's a neighborhood that you can't go to. I mean, I, like you or me can go pretty much anywhere in the city, but the, the, it, there's, it's just a weird, it, that's not the New York I know where there's neighborhoods that a person of color can't go to. Right. Right. And, and that's, you know, with Pittsburgh, it's, it's similar. Um, I mean, it, it is very segregated here. Mm -hmm. Like there's neighborhoods that are, you know, it's still very segregated, but mm -hmm. there's not like a neighborhood that I can think of that like a white, a uh, black person couldn't go into. Do right. they want to because of how fucked up the entire law enforcement is in just like Allegheny County alone? Yeah. No, yeah. but I can't think of any place like Benson like that or Diker Heights. Yeah. That exists like that. And I could be wrong. I mean, listen, if anybody from Pittsburgh yeah. is listening and thinks, you know, let me know I'm wrong, but I can't right. think of any, but yeah, New York, I mean, New York's one of the most diverse places, you know, and I go up to New York a lot, like that mm -hmm. I've ever visited, you know, you can walk down one street and it can be all Dominican shops and then the next right. street is all Israeli. Right. And I love that about New York. I love that it brings this, you know, and that's why I love Queens so much. I love wow. Queens too. Deb and I live kind of right on the border of Brooklyn. I mean, we live in Bushwick, but we're, I'm like, I'm like a half a mile from Queens from Glendale. And, uh, I love going up there. Yeah. I just, yeah. it's, but you would think a lot of Trump flags though, Oh God. but it's, it, it's a lot of, cause I guess Glendale, there's a lot of Irish in Glendale, but it's a lot of like, you'll see like McCormick gar, uh, garbage disposal. And there's a big Trump flag. Like, he wouldn't even, he would call security on you if he met you. Oh, yeah. He wouldn't like the Irish. Yeah. He would have been, you know, calling them, what the, I forget what he said today about uh, Bill Maher. Oh, he said Like, like he would, no, yeah. Trump would have, all of these people that were second wave immigrants that think that Trump would have done anything for them. I, I, I don't know. They got yeah. brain hands or whatever. Yeah. But we talk about um, neighborhood segregation. I, I hear that Portland, Oregon's pretty segregated. Really? Yeah. You like, would think because there aren't black people in Portland, but they're in they're in a part of the city that people don't really 
they're in their own part of the city. Like they're largely ignored. Yeah. And you know, well, now there's neighborhoods like that in Pittsburgh that are completely largely ignored and mm-hmm. they're, you know, that we're constantly activists are fighting for people to pay attention to, mm-hmm. um, you know, and these are like the neighborhoods that were affected the most by uh, the steel mills closing. Uh-huh. And they've just never been helped. Um, yeah. Because the steel mills, when the steel mills closed uh, around here, I mean, people killed themselves. Really? That was, yeah. It was 92% of the world's steel was produced in this area. Really? Yeah. So okay. you had mill town families. Uh-huh. So the Mon Valley area, the McKeesport area, and these are like suburbs of Pittsburgh. They were all mm-hmm. mill towns. Oh, yeah. The Steelers. Your t- right. football team. That's right. That's why we have the Steelers. Mm-hmm. But they were mill towns and they're largely ignored still. And there's police brutality that happens within, you know, their district, like their um, boroughs, because that's the other thing. We have really weird ways of how things are set up here because we have like boroughs and townships. And it's just, there's like, I don't know, how, I forget how many different police stations like different police forces that we have just in the greater pittsburgh area because there's so many little towns yeah a lot of those were mill towns yeah and they were largely ignored and they continue to be largely ignored and it's because the majority of the people in that neighborhood are black people and they can say no 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 but come on now Mm -hmm. i mean it's you can't you know you see it so much and that's why i it boggles my mind how, you know, people can't see it. Mm-hmm. But they can't see that this has, this is the way the system has set this up, mm-hmm. you know, and not just, you know, the law enforcement in these areas, um, the environment, they're looking to frack like everywhere. Yeah. Uh-huh. These kids are, you know, so I, yeah, I would say, I mean, we still have those, na- you know, those neighborhoods that are just largely ignored. Mm-hmm. Um, how does it, how is it though, like over in Queens and stuff? How's what? Like, do you guys have neighborhoods that are just like areas of Queens that are just largely ignored? Um, I, I mean, I, I would imagine I'm not really in those neighborhoods, but I guess one thing that I was thinking about was, you know, when I look back on my, my 12 years in New York, a lot of it was making my living, like just traveling around the city to different neighborhoods to do moving jobs or, or junk jobs or whatever it was. And sometimes, you know, driving a truck, but also sometimes like just taking the train and meeting, you know, the crew at whatever job it was. So the idea that like, you know, somebody can't do that. Like somebody is going to, it, somebody it's like, Oh, let's meet at the, let's meet at the job. It's in Diker Heights at eight in the morning and you're walking through, you're just some black guy on a moving crew walking through and you know, right. Some like, guinea like, is like, you, are you lost? You're, and you're there to work, you know, it's just, um, it, it's not, it's not something that I don't think happens as much anymore. Cause all the Italians went to the suburbs when they saw like, you know, a Puerto Rican in their neighborhood. Yeah. They're like, oh, um, fuck man. But I wanted to have you on the show because I think that you have a, you're, you're kind of, you know, you're like me, you have a healthy mix of um, Italian pride, but also Italian embarrassment. And uh, when I look at, I, I really am like, <laughs> I'm just so ashamed to be Italian sometimes. When you look at the general, the general like demeanor of this is a, this is a kind of a big part of what I want to talk about in this episode. When you look at the way that Italian Americans see themselves in relation to other people when you see them just frothing mad that a, that a Columbus statue is going to be taken down or, or fucked with in any way and how they're so, they get so upset. I don't know what that is, but it just feels so uh, just cucked to me. Yeah. It's almost like, because it's, it's, it's funny because Italians put themselves up on a pedestal, right? Of mm-hmm. like, well, everybody wants to be Italian and you guys yeah. appropriate our culture, you know, and that's right. And know, that's like, all true. I mean, they do, they want it. They hate us cause they ain't us. They hate us cause they ain't us. No, look, I don't give a shit, you know, appropriate because the yeah. thing is too, even, but the culture like that they approach that a lot of people quote unquote appropriate isn't really Italian 
mm-hmm. shit. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like all of Garden. Yes is- and no. I mean, but you've been to Italy, right? Yeah. Because I was kind of surprised how the country of Italy, how much it reminded me of my grandmother's house when I went there. It's very, you know. Well, yeah, that I mean, but I also think, too, that. But I guess Italian-American culture is more macho than Italian culture, right? Like, yeah, like it's different, like because even like when even when I was in those little the little villages, I mean, it does feel like very home. Like I felt more at home and like the little villages, like when I went to like Positano and um Sorrento than I did like in Rome Mm -hmm. in Rome I felt very I was like I'm an American I mean because it was just that's how people are over there yeah but I think with Italians because there was such there is such this like big emphasis on family and culture and everything we have put ourselves on this pedestal of like we're the greatest and you know um we've 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 given so much to like american culture and yada 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 whatever Mm -hmm, whatever mm -hmm. but then when we feel like when they feel any type of like disrespect yes there's but there's very much an insecurity there right it is we are the most oppressed um of you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. of immigrants or you know like well, we didn't, we did this and this is all that immigrants need to do if they want to get in this country. Like not yeah. even putting anything into consideration of, it's just this black or white feeling. We're either the yeah, best yeah, yeah. Right. or we're either, oh my God, we're so oppressed. And... Right, right. Right. When. Do you ever have people assume that because of the way you talk and look that you're like reactionary? Yeah. I mean, I think that people, because I am. I apologize for my dog. That's Dude, okay. Stop. All right. Um, but I think that because I am Italian and I'm loud and I'm very just animated, I think people do get intimidated by me and I don't like that uh-huh. because it's like really nice, you know? Yeah, like yeah, I yeah. always want to just, you know, I, I'm friendly with people. And I do, I'm able to gain like a quick rapport. I mean, that's what makes me a good therapist. But yeah. people do have a... No, but people wouldn't meet you and, and think like, oh, this person's a therapist. Right, right. You know? Like they wouldn't meet me and be like, oh, she's just, you know, like yeah. they meet me and I'm very like, you, you know that I have some type of ethnicity, like that I'm not, I, I don't know, that I'm not like German or whatever. You can tell that I'm Italian. But right? people would imagine you doing therapy and like telling a client to like key their boyfriend's car or something. You know, you'd be like, yeah, get out know. there and you show him. Right. Go, you, you go out there that. and you show him. And let me tell you something. Make sure you have ravioli in the fridge afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, we've, yeah. we've talked about this before. It's just so tragic to me to see like these protests in Chicago and you see these like presumably working class Italian American. I mean, older people, because it's not like, you know, it's not like our generation dealt with a lot of you know discrimination or whatever but but also like i remember my dad telling me a story when stop it my dad told me a story one time about how like some cop some cop harassed him why do you um some cop harassed him uh or something like that and said something about like i don't know like putting a bullet in his car or something and you would just think that somebody who would who has been through that would have a little more solidarity with people who are going through that now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, and maybe this is why, like, I'm a social worker. I can kind of understand, you know, with my with the kids that I work with on their level, because while well, I haven't been through a half of what they've been through, these kids. Mm-hmm. I can at least still understand that juvenile detention aspect and all that shit. Mm. But yeah, you would think that somebody that their ethnicity was at once oppressed Mm -hmm. um, and that they had to quote unquote struggle because when they came over here, they did, Mm. you know, like it is, they, it was never ever. I hate when people, you cannot ever compare it to slavery, right? Like, of course, over willingly. We yeah. did not come over. Like, it is nothing compared to that. But we were oppressed. Right. Um, but it's also so frustrating that, like, so many people just don't get that. Like, there's certain there's certain Italians that you talk to and they go, like, 
yeah, look at us. We it only uh, in three generations we we have like look at everything that we accomplished. Like they just don't make the connection that other people might have it a little worse off. And right. that's that's why that's uh, definitely a time when I'm embarrassed. To be yeah, because it's and it is embarrassing for us because you know we are you know we are so Amer- you know we are assimilated right like we're Americans but mm-hmm. that Italian piece is still always going to be with us because it was ingrained in us. Yeah. Um, and it is part of you know it is our culture, but it is, but even like Generation X, except here's the thing. My parents weren't like that. Mm-hmm. Like they weren't like my parents. Like my mom yeah, was, was going to say, awesome, you know what I mean? Like she, like my parents both voted Democrat, like all of that, but mm-hmm. they never really like, they always, they never gave up. Like, like to them struggle was struggle. Right. But they understood yeah. this difference of power and mm-hmm. you know the difference of white privilege Mm-hmm. you know of course nobody you know every white person is gonna fuck up everybody has that privilege and we're always we're never gonna be perfect allies we're gonna fuck up yeah. here's the thing that's how you learn yeah right right but it, it it boggles my mind that like you know i have like uncles and even cousins and shit that are so like these protests like they should be like yeah run up by a car and i mean and i would get into these like screaming matches because i'm like Dude, I'm actively out here protesting, actively Mm -hmm. out here. And you were saying, right, that you love me and I'm your niece and yada, 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 like, you know, Mm -hmm. family is everything. But you're saying, fuck it. Let me get hit by a car. Yeah. When, come on, like you people protested. If they remember, you know, and now my grandparents, I think, were here when Sacco and Vanzetti were murdered. Wait, when were they murdered? That, that was like 27 20 okay because your they grandparents went, were here when that happened my grandparents no no no. my grandparents weren't born yet no yeah your great grandparents. grandparents i think were here yeah but it was 1927 because they got arrested in 1925 mm-hmm. and then it was 1927 they were put they were murdered by the fucking state if that would have happened right now mm-hmm. italians would be up in fucking arms they would yeah. be doing the same shit yeah that all of us are doing yeah like and and the thing is is like they can call it rioting all they want it's a protest what do you want us to do and they don't understand that like you know and i think that they get so mad when they you know they're seeing like our generation being more you know we we are more politically active um Mm -hmm. we are more like way more anti-racist than they are Um, Yeah, I just don't know why they're so complacent with the way that the system is. But also at the same time, like when you look at them getting so mad about these Columbus statues and you look at like in Chicago, they're like, we fought, we fought so hard. Like the, the, the fucking, the fucking Christopher Columbus statue means so much to them. It means so much to them. And I think it's because they, they honestly, they have so little, they know how little they actually have and how little they were given. And it's like, but 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 Whitey gave them this little. Here's your little token. Here's your little Christopher. Here's your genocidal fucking slave trade. A statue of a gen- genocidal slave trader. That's for you. So like when that's being taken, it's like the it's like when your dog is getting his bone taken away or something. Right. Or you're taking a cell phone from a teenager. Yeah. But they didn't even. I don't even think Christopher Columbus was fucking Italian. Like that's the I thing. Think he, is was. That, he, he was. He was okay. Yeah. He was from Genoa. Okay, he's from Genoa, but but we don't really count them as real Italians anyway. No, they're fucking light skin trash. Yeah. Um, but but the thing is, is like one, they would know have no fucking clue who Columbus was unless mm. it was taught, you know, at school. And it was school, obviously yeah. taught at school. Yeah. But yeah, they're holding on to something. But why mean, does it mean so much to them? Because I think sometimes, I guess, if you're so ingrained to have so little mm-hmm. and something's taken, it's very territorial. I mean, yeah. and I'm, I try to, like, as mad as I get, because it is so fucking ridiculous. And but I'm, it's like no one's saying you have to go to work. Like, no one's saying, like, they're going to get rid of the holiday. I mean, you could honestly, I mean, no one is floating this idea, but, like, you could name it after another Italian. I don't know who you would pick. Right. There's multiple Italians. Maybe Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. Listen. 
Maybe well, Scors- I probably sort of Scorsese, honestly, right? Lorraine just have Bracco. a Scorsese day. What's that? Lorraine Bracco. Jane no, Pitt. they should actually. Why not Gandolfini? Because yes. uh, yeah, just have a Gandolfini day. Yeah. No, no, but honestly, though, if there was a Gandolfini statue and someone tried to take that down, I think I'd be pretty pissed. I think I'd show I up with a bat so <laughs> to defend it. Do not touch. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> you come near yes, this Gandolfini statue. I'm going to fuck you up. Yeah. Like yeah. that, I would be very territorial about that shit. Yeah. But yeah, no, I mean. Gandolfini David would be nice. Thing, think about, like, if you look back how people responded to John Gotti. Uh-huh. And how there were groups of Italians that were very, he did nothing. You know what I mean? He was Mm -hmm. a working man. Like Mm -hmm. he was, he did things for the community. Yeah. Like they. You could make that argument that he was, I think. But. You can because he was involved in, I mean, organized crime. And that's what organized crime does. But again, it goes back way farther as to why that even started. Yeah. And it goes back to what whatever the fuck went on over in Italy yeah when it wasn't a full state yeah you know I my my thing is though I we can briefly talk about John Gotti but my thing is that there's a reason that we know his name and not some of these other people there's a reason we don't talk about like what the fuck is that guy's name even get uh no no disrespect but uh uh gas pipe or uh, Vincent Giganti. We don't know those names as well as we do John Gotti because it's like John Gotti was a very beloved. He was a beloved figure in the neighborhood. And also he lived in a little like three bedroom house in Howard Beach. You know, right. he wasn't extravagant like Paul Castellano. Um, he cared about, I, there was a degree of him like, he did care about the people that he, he saw himself as this uh, sort of protector of the neighborhood. And I think if you're going to be a mob boss, that's, that's what you should strive for. Well, right, because if he didn't you hoard wealth. It, and think about it, back in the day, that is what they did do. And mm-hmm. that is why everybody was connected in some way. You weren't yeah. made or whatever, but everybody ran numbers. I mean, that yeah. was just a normal thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I think that John Gaudi maybe showed them, I guess, this last thing of, of what the mafia once what it could was. be. Yeah. Because, yeah, then it was just downhill from there like once he was you know gone everybody flipped and i'm not like you know uh saying i'm pro mafia or whatever but i totally understand why it started because again it's i try to look at things there's the community aspect of that and that's why people know his name right yeah yeah there were there were guys in the mob who did have a very like dark and like the guy I used to do this podcast with this guy, Frank Terranova, and he said he knew a lot of these guys. And he's like, yeah, there were some guys who just had this dark energy about them. Like they were, you know? Yeah. I mean, you have to be somewhat of a sociopath. To be, yeah, of course. You know, you have to have some type of antisocial trait to mm-hmm. be able to do that. And that's the thing with Gaudi is that Gaudi does fall. If you look at like personality disorders, he totally falls in line with antisocial personality disorder and he's mm. good at it he's charming mm-hmm. I, that's why he was beloved you know what yeah. i mean he's such there's this he's a very interesting character and that's you yeah. know tony soprano the character tony soprano same way right right i do wish i said that on the chapo episode i wish i i wish i kind of stuck up for our boy a little more who tony uh john john Gotti. Oh yeah, dude. I got to listen to that episode again. Um, I haven't listened to that episode in a while. Yeah. I loved the Gaudi. The, are you talking about the movie one? The movie one. Yeah. Yeah. That's my favorite. Did you see that movie? No, I did not see that movie, but I probably should just, uh, you can literally hear John Gotti's family in the director's ear being like, make sure, make sure you say he was a good guy. Like make sure you say he was (laughs) beloved by the community. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, uh, Remember, I, no, listen, this is embarrassing, but fuck it, I'm going to say it. Growing up gaudy, I used to watch that show, and I had a crush I used to watch it too, yeah. on the middle one, John. Oh. I thought he was I didn't even mom. think they looked that distinct. It's funny that you were able to tell them apart. Well, John was, like, the least, like, made-up one, because, yeah. like, that one kid, Carmine, there was, what, Carmine, John, and Frankie? Yeah. 
But I think Frankie too is like real fucked up. Like I mm-hmm. think he's like the Fredo. I think he might be the Fredo of them or something. Okay. Nice. I don't know. I've been I've been kept up with um Victoria. Well, Gordon. he had five. I mean, Gotti had five kids, right? And then he had because Angel is the oldest, the girl. Right. And then Victoria is number two. And then I think John Jr. is number three. Right. And then Frankie was the one who died. It's Frankie and Peter. So it's Angel, Victoria, John Jr., Frankie, Peter. Peter's like the younger, the youngest right. one. Who's your favorite Gotti kid? Uh, my, well, grandchild or kid out of the kid. five? Yeah. I kind of uh, like John you know, Jr. I like John Jr., yeah. And John Jr., but Victoria, too, I don't know. There's something about her, maybe, because she's just very, I don't know. But I do like John Jr. Yeah. I think he's, uh, he's kind of like, he's like, well, who, who do you think would win in a fight, John Jr. or Hunter Biden? Hunter Biden. Oh, John Jr. would wreck him. Yeah, I think he'd Come get on. the shit out of him. Yeah, what's Hunter Biden going to do? Um, But... Right. If but I do kind of – I just want to get back to that – yeah, but I want to get back to that Columbus thing where it's like, you know, I mean, what well, the fuck yeah. are you doing? Right, you, right. Like, why worship him? Because here's the thing. What did he actually do for in a, the Italian community? Mm-hmm. This was – all he did was colonize fucking America. That's what he yeah. did, yeah. right? Like, he found America, fucking was like, all right, fuck all of you. We're going to put a bunch of fucking they, they They say he was, like, really good at sailing. Like, the fact that he got across the Atlantic. I guess no one had done that before. That was kind of a big deal. Okay. Yeah. But they don't even know that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's just – the. but I think the thing that is so – when you when you look at – I mean, we can get back this, this, when you look at this particular murder and then you look at after they march through Bensonhurst and you look at all these people, all these Italian Americans coming out of their house, chanting racial slurs, yelling, being generally awful. It just, it feels like you're like, this is such a pathetic cucked existence that you oh, feel yeah. so, you know, watching those clips, um, it was, I was just sick to my stomach. Yeah. To see that. I just so sick to my stomach because it's just like, because how do you even have empathy for that? Yeah. Right. And yeah. those are our people. Like that's our fucking, those are yeah. Italian Americans. Yeah. I can't have, and I'm supposed to have be like empathetic as a social, but like to see yeah. that. Yeah. Was just so horrible because they had no idea how terrible this was yeah there's no shame or there's no like there's no like oh maybe maybe you know those kids that killed this 16 year old who was just going to this neighborhood to buy a car maybe they fucked up it, and they actually were to... kids legally Re- okay the um what's the main kid that did it well the, the, the ringleader was this guy keith mondello and then the guy who he was like 18 it. 19 years old right 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 <laughs> I Who's get, the guy? Joe Fama was the guy who shot him. Right. Yeah. And they were like, so they were legally now brain development wise, they weren't adults, but mm-hmm. legally they were adults. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't even this thing of don't charge them as adults or whatever. Like they committed a crime. Well, no, I said they kid. Cause up. the victim, the victim was 16. Yeah. The victim was 16, but it was like, they no empathy for Yusuf, none mm-hmm. from anyone in that neighborhood Mm -hmm. it was all based on these you know 10 to 30 kids and who knows how many of them were like spoiled fucking brats yeah you know because that's another thing that um italian americans they love a capitalist system they love it they they want you know what i mean yeah 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 they bigger better they live in these you know half a million dollar million dollar houses right right in Pittsburgh and they're they would be considered middle class but it's all it's this vanity it's this right facade of like uh, well of like we we struggle or something right like look we struggled and now like we're uh, you know it's just this it's I noticed that a lot like it's this like extravagance you know and I'm Mm -hmm. not saying all Italians do it right yeah just there's no 
and, and you still see it today because I argued when, um, you know, there was a big case here, Antoine Rose shot and killed by a police officer uh-huh. and arguing with like people in my family about, um, and these are like cousins and like, you know, stuff like this obviously wasn't my parents, but just arguing with them about like, they're like, well, he shouldn't have ran. He shouldn't have ran. He was a 17 year old kid. I was like, what if that was- He ran from the cops and he was shot. Well, the cop went to go to this car um, to stop, to stop the car and kid being a child got scared and ran out of the car. Mm -hmm. So the cop shot at him three times. From behind. Yeah, Walter Walter Scott was was shot like that too, running away, and it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. They're running away. I mean, they're not fighting back. They're not. They're running away. Um, and yeah, but it's also too like those ten to thirty kids, right? Like you, that's group think, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm not gonna say all thirty kids were like sociopaths or or whatever. I mean, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, Obviously, like, the punishment they got was complete bullshit. Mm -hmm. Um, And it just goes to show you again how the prison industrial complex is set up to just fuck black people up. Yeah. Well, the kid kid who shot him got 30 years. He's still – he'll be eligible for parole in 2022. Okay. But the one got out in eight years, right? Um. Yes, the guy who was sort of the ringleader of the group of kids. Because he just, he died like, what? Did he? I, I think, who died in 2003? 2003? Somebody died. I think it was one of the... Um... The guy who led the lynch mob in... Oh, uh... He killed himself in, in, in Howard Beach. That that guy Michael Griffin who died who died okay. running away because he hit by a car he killed himself I, I don't I don't know when, um, but yeah, because they like went on television too and like apologized for their role and mm-hmm. you know but you know again if I were the mother of Yusuf Hawkins I would be horrified. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and you continue to see this. I mean, there's a mother right now um, in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. and she's on strike to find out what ha- or on a hunger strike to find mm-hmm. out what happened to her son. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's just so many mothers that are having to deal with this. Yeah, and you would think Italians, being as protective as they are to their children, mm-hmm. would be able to empathize with that. You would think. You would think. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing that's embarrassing is it, it, it is such a very like cucked existence. It's people who are afraid of confronting the system that is oppressing that that's oppressing them not as much. So it's like, whatever, it's fine. So the system's not as bad to them. So let's just like, just the making excuses and the, and the, the rationalizing of all this stuff. I mean, it's uh, I don't know. It doesn't yeah, make any sense. And I have a hard time with it because I'm like, okay, is it age? Is it they've just given up on like any type of progress Mm -hmm. or are they just really happy with where we're at? Everything works for them. So why try to better society at all? It's definitely, I think it's definitely a mix. Um, Right. Because like, I mean, your family was working class, but mine, my family, my dad's family owned a restaurant you know, in Trenton. So it's like they worked very hard, but they own something. And I think that when you have, when you're like moderately successful, maybe there is that aspect of like, well, you know, like I work my ass off and I'm fine. And I'm start. I'm, I'm actually, I'll tell you what, I've been doing some of my own like freelance moving stuff. So yeah. I kind of like, you know, basically I'm the one who like clients talk to and then I find a crew and everything. So I'm, I'm essentially like the owner of this, you know, service. Yeah. So I got to, I just have to make sure that I, and I'm doing like, you know, I'm doing pretty okay right now, but it, 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 I mean, like you have to make sure that you don't, you don't fall into that trap of being like, Hey, I did it. So everybody everybody can can do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like this fine balance because, you know, 
again, like with, you know, you do, you work hard, so you should enjoy your, your earnings. But at the same time, I think that, and this is just me, like I have to find a way to be able to give back. It, It bothers me. And that's why I don't really, you know, I don't, not don't really, I hate capitalism. Like, Mm-hmm. I would be perfectly fine with everybody having access to fucking whatever. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Having access to healthcare, having access to good food, having, you know what I mean? And it's mm-hmm. not like we can't do it. Of course. Um, but it's just people get greedy. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm going to take a quick break. Let's keep the meeting going, but okay. I'm going to be right back. Uh, I just got to take a leak. But there's another aspect of this story that I want to talk about that I think I want to get your opinion on. Awesome. All right. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. So what I want to talk about now is um, there's another aspect of this story that uh, I think is one of the, I mean, one of the big factors in, in what happened to this kid and this kid's murder. Um, the reason that this mob started was because I, now I've read a couple conflicting, uh, not conflicting, but it, it, it was either because someone, these were, these were high school kids, I think, right? And it was because someone, the reason that they were out, they were like out for blood the night that this happened was because it was either someone in their high school class, some girl in her high school class was dating a black guy or like some girl invited uh, some black and Latino kids to her birthday party. And they were pissed off about that. So they were like out and they were mad And they were like essentially just looking for trouble. And I think they thought that maybe Yusuf was the one who was dating the girl. Um, But there, so there was a video, there was a video that I watched. I I actually love, I love YouTube. And I think when you go on YouTube, it's better to look at videos that have less views than more views because you, you see a little more like some more unfiltered uh, speech. Yeah. Yeah. but this guy sort of made the case that like racial violence is, is simping. <laughs> uh, like, yeah. That guy, that guy rocks, dude. Yeah. Um, let me find his channel. I had one of his videos open and I don't have it open anymore <laughs> and I'm annoyed, but uh, the guy, fuck, wait a minute. I sent it to a friend of mine. Oh, I sent it to you. Yeah. Um, oh. What? Uh, shit. I don't know if I can play this through the, There's his name is Sean James. And if he you says share it through the meeting, you can share it, play it. Let me just, I'll just play it right now and see how it, how it sounds. Okay. And expressing their grievances. And the main reason why they didn't want to express their grievances to that white woman was because they knew if they expressed their grievances to that white woman, they would have no chance, not only with that white woman, we, By the way, this guy has another video. It's called Racist Simps in History, the O.J. Simpson Trial. <laughs> other white women in the neighborhood because they would be showing what a simp they truly were. They would be showing the world what kind of a pussy beggar they truly were <laughs> and that they live to be under women. That's what a lot of people don't understand. Most of these white males who participate in these racial incidents are some of the biggest simps out there. And they do. Exactly. Yeah. And I think there is that there's definitely that aspect of it where it's like, for some reason, you're just so you're just so insecure and you feel so you've done so little in your life and you feel so shitty about yourself that you're like, I'm mad that uh, this girl that I liked is dating a she's dating a black guy. Can you fucking believe that? Oh, I don't believe it. I'm so offended. I'm th- I take that so personally. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, you know, I have personal experience with this. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, that's what you personal you experience with, with what? With with men, white men, saying that thing uh-huh. stuff to me because I've been in an interracial relationship uh-huh. and being told like. You know, well, white guys are never going to ever date you again. Like, yeah. oh, why would you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, like, why would you ruin yourself that way? Or like, just some. Like, I know that's like crazy. Shit. That's wild. Yeah. But, yeah, um, like, yeah. Insane. Yeah. I, that is, that is sort of like, or maybe it's probably not anymore. 
but it, that was kind of like the last uh, a bastion of like acceptable racism. Like I remember being a young kid and my parents being like, listen, like you can be friends with black people, but just don't date them. Don't bring a black girl home. And it's not because we don't like them. It's because that uh, people will stare at you when you go out. So that's like the, the coward, that aspect of it, that, that sort of cowardice of like, don't do it because people are going to stare at you, you know, because it's going to be harder. Like, don't do something that you want to do because of what other people think, because you're going to get dirty looks at the Applebee's. Um, and then that, and then they're also like, you know, oh, you know, black people don't like it either. They don't want to see their women with some white guy. I mean, that's probably true. Um, but there is another thing as a white guy that's, that you do kind of sometimes you have to accept that uh, black people are better than you. Like a lot of times, a lot of black guys are you ha- like they're funnier and they're better athletes. And it's just something you have to accept about being a, <laughs> a white man. Yeah, you guys are just gonna have to. That they're gonna take. They're gonna take some of the white women, and there's nothing you can do about it. Listen, no, but it is. I mean, because that is a very typical thing that our generation heard, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Listen, it's fine to be, you know, friends with black people, but if you date them, you know, you don't want to bring them home. Um, Yeah. Because, like, my dad was like that. He was. He was like that in the beginning. Do you think that's what killed him? Yeah. That's exactly what racism killed my father. People. Yeah, yeah. It, it gave him colon cancer. You're like dad. Oh, okay. But it was like that. Sub- Wouldn't subtle that be kind of funny though if you brought a black guy home and your dad just dropped dead? Right. I mean, it'd like, be a little uh, funny. Remember when Tony, when Meadow was dating that uh, yeah. black kid, and Tony like passed out and shit. Yeah. yeah. No, like, and it really wasn't like my dad never gave me shit or anything about it. He had a conversation with my mom, and he was like, "I just." He's like, I don't want her to have to go through, you know, the same shit, like being yeah. stared at or like, what if she has, you know, I don't want her, you know, what if she has a granddaughter? What is the yeah. granddaughter going to have to go through? My mom was like, yeah, shut the fuck up. Like, it, 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 does he yeah. treat her right? Mm-hmm. Then that's it. And that really was after at that point, like after they had that conversation. Yeah. My father never treated because I've dated white guys, black guys. You know, he's never treated. The, it's always been about. It was always about with my parents who treated me well. Mm-hmm. You know, I guess yeah. who handled my loud mouth or whatever. But it, yeah. It's so I mean, funny though. Every every interracial couple that I know personally, every every guy and most of it is a black guy and a white girl. But every guy I know in every relationship is just like an amazing like an amazing dude like it's someone that you would want your daughter to be with yeah i mean and that's the thing is that you know i you know my parents you know and my dad you know he's not saying they have to be amazing i mean you can keep this the bar wherever you want it to be you know right if you want to date like eddie griffin yeah whiter but whatever yeah go for it girl no don't do that yeah. Um, but no, my, well, my cousin, my cousin Ariel was very big on like, cause she knew that she knew that because my, my dad's family lives on the West coast. My dad has one brother and his four kids live on the West coast. So she was always very like, I think she kind of like tried to, cause she, she knew how much like the family didn't like interracial dating. So I think she went out of her way to like date black guys. <laughs> so I what, just, just like, to piss the family off? Yeah. 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 She definitely did it on purpose, but I, I just I imagine her like bringing a wino home or something. Right, just, like, like I dated the, the one, um, one of the guys I dated, he was white, and he mm-hmm. was a fucking piece of shit. Mm-hmm. Like, not saying that like all white guys are a piece of shit and all black guys are amazing. Well, I'm a piece of shit. Well, yeah, you fucking suck. All yeah. you left is podcast. Just Christ, no. Yeah. But but like to me, and I'm also not one of those people that have been like, well, I don't, I don't date. I only date black guys. I only date like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because that's weird too. Well, right. It's fetish. It's it's like a, a it's fetishizing. It's fe- you know fetishizing. I mean? like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah, whatever the fucking word is. Yeah. Like, cause you're like, why would I do that? Uh-huh. Like, why would I just date one race? Like, why would I just date? No, you're attracted to who you're attracted to, right? But like, yeah. At the end of the day, physical attraction isn't the only thing that you know what I mean? That, that keeps a relationship, Mm -hmm. Um, you know? So to me, like, so 
to me, it was always kind of, now, like, in certain areas of Pittsburgh, when I was, like, dating a black man, like, I would get stares and shit Mm -hmm. from, like, older white couples or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, I never got shit at all from, like, anyone in the black community. Really? And, 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 and look, I'm cognizant of, like, if a black woman would be, like, pissed at me for, you know, dating black men in the past or whatever, you know, look, I get it, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, and that's never, you know, been my intention. Like, I'm taking all your men or whatever. Like, yeah. that's, again, I don't, I, like, race doesn't define who I'm attracted to at all. Right. Um, but, I, yeah, nobody's ever, like, said anything. But I've always been very cognizant of, you know, that there are these differences. And to be, you know, there's, you can't be colorblind. You have to know, mm-hmm. you know, because that's the other thing about interracial dating too, is that is. But also, white- do you think that maybe Whitey convinced the the black man to desire his prize? And maybe that's why so many successful black guys date white women. I mean, yeah, that, that's definitely part of, I think, that post-traumatic slavery syndrome. I mean, you're going yeah. to, you know. That's what Umar Johnson says. Well, if you put in, I mean, if you continue to do if things have continued to happen over history, right. Mm -hmm. Within your culture or whatever you want to call it. I mean, those things are going to be ingrained, you know, Mm -hmm. and you know, I, I don't know, like at the end of the day, um, it just seems like a white wife is like final achievement unlocked for some, you know, right. Which is, I don't really get that because it's like, there's a lot of like, white women yeah that they're great but there's also a lot of black women that are fucking amazing you know yeah. what i mean um and i think that it i don't think that it should be looked at like that as a prize like the white woman should be the prize like i think mm. it's you're attracted to or you're attracted to um and that's that i mean there was some chick on twitter the other day that was like flipping out about um i think it was like like Asian men dating white women Mm -hmm. and like how, like, I forget how Asian men dating white women. Yeah. Like she was super pissed about like Asian men dating white women and how they would never date another woman of color or it was something Uh bizarre like that. I don't know. For me, when I get on Twitter, especially late at night, I heard it's hard for Asian men to date anybody that's not Asian, an Asian woman. What'd she say? I heard that it's hard. I heard it's dating is hard for Asian guys. Like I heard Asian, Asian guys have some of the toughest go at dating. Really? Yeah. Cause they're seen I, as like, you know, they're seen as uh not masculine. I dated a uh, half Japanese guy once who's half Japanese. Yeah. But half, but you, half is the most that you'll go. That uh, same with me. Yeah. I, only... I mean, if I fell in love, if I, if I met <gasps> someone with it, yeah. Cause again, it doesn't really, it doesn't matter to me. Like now, if you're a fucking like liberal Democrat, I can't, especially right now, mm-hmm. I, I would hold that against you. Mm-hmm. But race, you know, I don't really. That's just never been my thing. You yeah. Know? Um, but I do, I do have to say, I can't stand white women that that use the N word and they think that it's okay to use the N word because they're dating a black man or they're married. Oh, does that happen? You know what I mean? Does Even, that happen? Oh my God. Yeah. There's girls that say it, but they'll say it like with the A. Yeah. Soft A, they don't do it with the ER, but they'll, yeah, they'll talk like that because they, um, you know, they've picked up whatever, ver- you know, cause I don't, the whole like talking black thing, like I don't get that shit. <laughs> Because it's just, I don't know, maybe it's just because I just talk how I talk or whatever. Mm. Um, but there's the, there's white women that, like, they, I have, you know, like, it, they're, they'll use, like, the N-word, like, while they're talking. Like, they'll be like, and I said, da-da, like, you know. Yeah. You're just like, yeah, what, yeah. what the fuck? Like, you're a white chick, dude. Like, what are you yeah, doing? Yeah, I haven't run into that that right. much. Right, like, but... what are you doing using that word? Like, and yeah. You know, it's insane. Um, I've seen it like a couple times, and I've always said something like, "You're, fu- are you fucking out of your mind?" Like, cause mm-hmm. that's just super disrespectful. Sure. Um, you know, like it's just super disrespectful. Like, you're a white woman. W- what are you doing using that word? You know. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that, I mean, I think it's definitely less, there's less of a focus on it now, like mm-hmm. interracial dating. But um, I also think the other part with Italians being like against it is they are very um, keeping their bloodline, mm-hmm. keeping that, like, it's very, you know, anytime I tell um, anyone like that I'm 100% Italian, yeah, like, I can prove it on a 23 and me or whatever they're you know and i know like i'm not a hundred percent because we were taken over so many fucking times right but it's right what bloodline well the italian bloodline the being full-blooded you know what i mean be yeah but we spent most of the the time being raped by moors so right and the french and whoever else fucking had us because we were so taken like we were taken over a ridiculous amount of times Mm -hmm. well i can't remember the date that we became that italy became a full state but yeah that's the thing is that you really can't say that we're keeping the bloodline if you're dating another italian because one half of italy wasn't unified yeah and it was taken over by so many fucking people so Mm -hmm. there's no way that's why like dude if you do a 23 and me there's Mm -hmm. all if you're considered like full-blooded italian or whatever mm-hmm. most of your shit you know is in the mediterranean but like then you'll see like just little things like yeah nigeria or france yeah, or yeah. whatever because again it was taken over so many fucking times but- it's this weird thing with with italians position though in this in this country where it's like whitey like let i think there's there's an anxiety where it's like whitey just let us in like we were like the last people to be let into the club and they kind of, and we're also like wearing white socks. Like we're dressed, we're not really up to dress code. And there's like an insecurity about it. So we're very vocal about like the respect, respectable neighborhood. You know, we, uh, we keep our neighborhoods clean because we want that. We want that. Dis- we're so desperate for that distinction from everybody else. Um, when really we could just identify as minorities and be, you know, do, yeah, do better. Just, you know. But that's the other thing. Yeah, so they can actually really be oppressed. You know yeah. what I mean? And okay, really see what it is really like to be oppressed. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just... I have a friend, Usama. He's a comic. He's from uh, Bangladesh. And I was like, yeah, Italians are like the bot. We were in, doing a festival in Minneapolis together. And I was like, yeah, Italians are like, we're like the bottom of white people. Then he goes, yeah, but you're the top of brown people. And I said that. Uh, yeah, you, I think you told me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they said that on stage in Minneapolis. And th- people didn't really know what I was talking about. But... um. But yeah, there is this weird, I think it's like a, I think it's like a little trick with, with, uh, cause there was a time when we were, you know, considered ethnic, but why yeah. sort of like let us in? My question for you is who do you think is the next group that, that Whitey's going to let in? Cause I think Indians are pretty much in the club. Asians are in the club. I wonder if Puerto Ricans will be let in next. Maybe or Cubans. Cubans definitely. Yeah. Because if you think about it, there's a lot of Cubans that are... There's a lot of very white Cubans. Right. Very right-wing. Like the Menendez brothers' dad. What's that? Like the Menendez brothers' father. He was Oh, uh, yeah. And that's why yeah, they, they killed were Cuban. Him. That's what I heard. Why? No, I'm just playing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because he was so conservative. Uh-huh. No. Yeah. But no, I mean, I think, yeah. I mean, out of... Because I don't see them ever... You know, I don't see them ever accepting black people fully i i think that they're yeah. we're gonna have to fight these systems over and i i honestly think we're gonna have to take them over i mean yeah. here's the thing like i'm fucking super la- you know i'm yeah i'm like fuck it all like let's just take it mm-hmm. over like we gotta mm-hmm. overthrow everything mm-hmm. fuck it mm-hmm. if the fbi listens to this i'm just i'm just talking i apologize no but right it, but it, but it does it does feel like yeah yeah bl- uh, black people are going to be kept out black people and probably native americans are going to be kept out of the system for- and latino so i read actually a really good oh not a good article but I you read don't think a- latinos are like a wild card no i think that they're going to be because i think that um you don't think it'll be the type of latino there's i think that they're going to be lost in the shuffle because there was an article today about how latino youth now make up the most numbers in juvenile justice Mm -hmm. where it used to be black youth 
now they're still up, but the La Latinos um, and Hispanic children in juvenile detention, and this isn't counting the kids at the border. Mm -hmm. These are kids that are, you know, American, like born here, that mm -hmm. are of, you know, Hispanic descent, mm -hmm. um, that are being charged, in, you know, in juvenile and convicted in the juvenile justice system, found adjudicated, that's the language, whatever. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that they're, I don't think so much that they're going to be a wild card. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that it's something that we need to pay attention to because I still, I think that as, because again, we're, there be, they're a huge population. Yeah. You know, and we're starting to see a population grow in Pittsburgh, which is, which I think is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but mm -hmm. I also am, I like differences. I like cultural shit. I like, I like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just don't, I hate cookie cutter shit. I like diversity. I've always sure. done that. But um, I, I don't, I think that it's something to like look out for to see like how, how they're going to end up being oppressed at some point. I mean, mm -hmm. they're oppressed already now, mm -hmm. but you know. Yeah. I mean, I don't think, I don't think Arabs, I don't think they're ready for Arabs yet. Um, no no they're not they're not no um yeah i mean i kind of like, wish we talked about the i mean i i don't wish we talked about the case because people are going to probably watch the documentary hopefully when it comes out it's good it's called uh storm over storm over brooklyn um but uh and i'm excited to watch it because i'm sure it's going to touch on stuff that we didn't get to touch on today but but somebody but we should we should speak for the italian we should you know give the Italian American perspective. So I'm glad we got to do that today. Yeah, because I think that people should know, like we don't fucking agree with our fucking, yeah. with the generations above us. Like we do think that they're ridiculous. Um, yeah. And you know, this is what happened was fucking terrible. Sure. Um, yeah. They're going to hang on to this mustache for a little bit. You should dude. It's looking good. What's Deb think about it? Uh, she's she's still a little pissed at me residually oh, from our no. last fight. I think we're getting back there, but she's so still. So you're not gonna ask her about the mustache. It's weird. It's weird to be fighting with your partner and to know that you have a mustache because you're like, do I look stupid? Am I losing this fight? Well, right, because you don't know if she's gonna tell you if it looks stupid because she's mad at you for it looks stupid because it really looks stupid. You know, luckily she doesn't really resort to a lot of personal attacks to her credit. Like she's very objective the way she argues, which is almost a little, it's that's harder to argue with. Cause Hell she's yeah, very much she's like, awesome. yeah, she well, doesn't like, but right. She, she's not, she's not really one to like lob a personal attack at me. Um, she will bring up like everything, you know, every bad thing that I've done <laughs> and then I have to answer. She makes me, she makes me answer for stuff that I've done, which is, uh, you know, in a way worse. Cause that, if she was like, yeah, you fat fuck, I'd be like, well, you're just upset right now, you know? But no, but you have to actually really. She should have been like a lawyer or something. I mean, she's good at her job now, but she could have been a lawyer. She's a good anyway. She's a good girl. You gotta. You better take care of her. Thanks. I will. But your mustache. I think you should. Uh, it looks good. Rock Thanks. it. All right. Cool. Um. Listen. Any any final thoughts before we wrap up? Any big takeaways from this story? Anything? I don't know. No. I just think that it is important to talk about these cases. Um. You know, and I try to do that on Twitter, like when there's shit that comes up, especially when it comes to kids. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that we need to continue to talk about it. I mean, you know, not to get involved with the 2020 election, mm -hmm. but like we've been protesting for fucking three months now. Yeah. Like destroying shit, like doing thing, like really screaming, like we need to defund the police. Yeah. And um, our and VP, picked a cop. You know, the Democratic VP picked is basically a fucking cop. Are you surprised though? Uh, no, I mean, I actually, I didn't think that he was going, like, I I didn't think that he was going to pick Wa Warren or Kamala, so I'm surprised that it came down to those two. Mm -hmm. but Who I'm could not, he have picked to, like, throw us a bone? 
if he was going to? Barbara Lee, Karen Bass, or Nina Turner. Yeah. I think Karen Bass is the one that I like. Um, mm-hmm. I would, didn't like Rice because she's like a fucking war hawk. Nina um, Turner would be awesome, but there's like no chance. No, no. They will always ban her from everything. Yeah. I mean, but they she's treat her like shit. Yeah. Yeah, she's a fucking force. I, I love mean, her so much. Oh, dude, she's amazing. She would have yeah. been a, an amazing VP for Bernie. Yeah. But I mean, I think that, you know, going back to, I think even with her, there's a little something where it's like the, the, like, because she's so, because like you said, because she's such a force, I think that, I think that makes people uncomfortable where like, for me, it's like pe- people I know talk like that. That's just how yeah. people I know talk and people are, pa- she's passionate. And, and, but I think that makes a lot of like these boardroom types uncomfortable. It's, it's such a shame that she gets treated the way she does. It does. And it makes all of these white K hive people. I mean, they have been nothing like they call us rate. They call Bernie racist. Yeah. For, you know, shit. And look, Bernie was not perfect on race. He did focus a lot on class, but that, but Bernie was Bernie and, and he was, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He was better on any race than any other fucking candidate. Yeah. But they will say the most horrible shit about Nina Turner. Horrific. Yeah. Yeah. Such racist shit. Vitriol, yeah. And they can get like just get away with it. And it's like, yeah, oh, I'm so- oh, I'm I'm sorry that I'm sorry that I said he needs to muzzle her. I should have chose my words a little better. Right. Yeah. Right. You're but but God forbid I fucking say that I think it was horrific that Kamala Harris jailed parents for truancy. Yeah, good luck. Dealt with, with fucking therapy. Like mm-hmm. But, you know, that's just what it is. But I think we need to talk about these cases because I think that if we are looking at a Biden slash Harris administration, Mm -hmm. we're going to have to fight back. And I'm not saying get in the Democratic Party or run for office. No, there's other things that you can do if you don't want to do that. You don't have to go that route. Mm -hmm. You could do other things. For sure. And talking about cases like this is one of them and sharing that information. So yeah. if you see a, a story about a kid, a, a black kid being fucking killed in a residential facility, share that shit. Mm-hmm. Get that kid's name out there. If there's a judge that is putting a 15 year old in juvenile detention during a pandemic, mm-hmm. putting her in danger because she didn't complete homework, talk shit on that judge. Yeah. Push that judge. Call that judge every fucking day. Mm-hmm. Mary Ellen Brennan, I did not forget about you, and I'm still going to help find somebody to Yeah, you her. fucking cunt. Fuck you. So, um, but yeah, no. Talk about it. Do it. I mean, that... Because if, if we're facing a Biden... I mean, we're going to have to fight a Trump administration anyways if he wins, but that's the thing that I'm the most worried about. I mean, they're going to fuck a lot of shit up. Mm-hmm. They're going to, I guess, fuck as much shit as, up as Trump, mm-hmm. but they're still going to, like, I have a, a very valid concerns about what the field I work in and what it's going to look like. And it has nothing to do with my, the, the work that I'll have to put in or whatever. It's about these kids. Yeah. And these kids, we need to continue to, to rehabilitate them and not go back to incarceration. Like mm-hmm. Biden was super cool with and so is yeah. Harris. Yeah, yeah. I know. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show and talking about this stuff and uh thanks for I love coming on the show. Good. You want to plug anything? Um not yet. I am right. going to be starting a podcast okay. very soon once I move into my new house. Nice. Um, and it's going to be called uh oh my god totally bugging. Nice. And it's going to be about like millennial nostalgia. And you should go on about, Etsy like, and get a neon, get a neon sign that says, that says uh, totally bugging. Totally bugging. That could be yeah, a set piece. Yeah, talk shit about, you know, like things that like millennials would remember, right? Yeah. So we're going to have episodes about like, we have to have an episode on Bernie Sanders because Bernie Sanders was a very, it's a huge part of our generation, right? Mm-hmm. But then we're going to have episodes on like, obviously like rap um we're gonna probably watch some movies like 90s movies and do critiques of them because Mm -hmm. their kids 90s movies are just wildly implausible 
Nice. Um, so yeah, so I will keep everybody posted on that, but other than that, no, not really anything. Um, nice. All right, cool. Well, that's the show, everybody. Please support us on Patreon. Uh, go to patreon.com slash sit down pod for $5 a month. Guess what you get? You get a show every single goddamn day, six days a week. We're doing little 20 minute shows over there. So that's a lot of fun. Thanks if you're a Patreon subscriber and uh, follow Maria on Twitter. Uh, what is it? Sandernista412. Sandernista412. 412. And- so Sandernista, it's a play on. Yeah, it. we get it. Ha, wah, wah, wah. Um, cool. Well, thanks again. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.